This is episode 228 of the Beyond the Food Show, and today we're talking about the anti-diet approach to health. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Going to Beyond the Food Show. I'm Stephanie Dozier, clinical nutritionist and emotional eating expert, creator of the Going to Beyond the Food Method, and founder of the Going to Beyond the Food Academy. Corporate executive turned health expert with my own journey with weight, body image, and food, it's now my mission to help smart, successful women like you live confidently right now and unconditionally. Ready, sister? Let's do this. Hello, sisters. Welcome back. And this is your host, as always, Stephanie. And today is a solo episode because I want to celebrate the closing of the Academy and also bring you into the world of health. What does the two have to do together? Well, first of all, yes, we did close the Going to Be on the Food Academy with our first group for 2020. And I'm so excited to be working with these women for the next six months. And so far in the first two weeks, the results have been phenomenal. The change that I'm seeing, the empowerment that I'm seeing in those ladies is just incredible. So if you're one of them listening to this, yay to you for choosing you. But I also want to say that, yeah, my program is phenomenal and it creates all kinds of transformation, but really it's because of them. The transformation that they've seen in just those two short weeks is because of the choice that these women made for themselves. They decided to shift from fear to love, to love themselves enough to trust themselves, to love themselves enough to believe in their own potential. They choose to love themselves enough to commit their time, their mental space, their financial resources to learn how to bridge the gap from where they are to where they want to be. They choose themselves. And that's the starting, that's the platform from where the academy, the Going to Beyond the Food Academy program can really operate. It's women have to make this choice. Otherwise, the transformation is not going to happen. So kudos to all of you. My coaching to you today, and this is how we're going to transition to the topic of health, no matter what you struggle about today, how can you choose the path of love instead of fear? And when we talk about health, right, the concept of health and having healthy behavior, healthy promoting behavior, higher self-care, Are you doing it from a place of fear or are you doing it from a place of love? And that's going to be the starting point of the topic of today. How can we adopt an anti-diet approach to our health? And that first starting point is shifting from engaging with our health from a place of fear to a place of love. Now, if you're watching this live with me, I've talked to you on the last episode about a, something really exciting that is going to happen in three weeks now, which is um, the launch of a brand new program that I've been working on for the last 18 months. Really as a passion project for me. Um, it's about the creation of a program to help you engage with health promoting behavior in a non diet perspective, right? It's about a weight neutral approach to health, which really out there right now, I don't see anything like there's a lot of wellness program. There's a lot of health program, but they all have thinner bodies, weight loss as a primary factor to achieve health. The way that this program is going to look at health is by taking the notion of body weight completely out of the picture. It's to say, perhaps, right, science right now is not clear on the impact of our body weight. There's no direct correlation 
that we see and know of body weight to health condition. We do see association and correlation, but we don't see causation yet. No one's been able to prove causation. So understanding that, what if we take the desire to be in a thinner body or the need to be in a thinner body to achieve better health, what else can we focus on? And that's what this new program called Going Beyond the Food Health Mastery is going to be really focused on. But what I wanted to talk to you about today is how do we get to a place mentally that we can engage with health without it becoming just another diet? Because that is problematic right now. And that's why this project has been under the radar for so long, is I had to find a way in which to talk about health without triggering you listening and the future student of this program into just another diet. Because that's what I lived myself when I first transitioned out of dieting into the world of health. I didn't know what I didn't know, and there was no program out there in a weight-neutral approach and an anti-diet approach, so I swam boom, into the world of functional medicine, which I thought wasn't about weight loss, but truly it was about restriction, it was about weight loss, it was about being in a thinner body, and I got myself wrapped into achieving optimum health so that I can unlock weight loss, and finally be in a healthy body. And I didn't want that in my program. So it took a lot of time. We're actually four nutritionists working on this program and a lot of editing and a lot of beta testing. Uh, We actually had two full round of students like testing this program. So we didn't trigger people back into diet culture and into dieting or even healthyism, right? So this is where we're going to talk about for the rest of the podcast is how do we get ourselves ready to commit to health without falling back into diet culture, diet mindset, or healthyism. So if you're new to this podcast, because I know like our podcast is in a huge trajectory of growth, which by the way, thank you very much to all of you who are leaving review. If you haven't left a review yet, go for it. Like you really are helping us getting this message out into the world and share the episode, like review, share it. Like this is a grassroots movement, right? I say it all the time, but I'm repeating it again. So anyway, if you're new to the podcast, um, and this is your first few episodes, I would say pause this episode right now. And you have kind of two episodes that you have to listen to first, because we're going to assume a lot of facts that were thought in those two episodes. So episode 208, which was health beyond dieting, where we explore the evidence around health and weight and how obesity is not a cause of health issue, but instead an association, right? So this whole relationship to weight and health, if it's still like a a shadowy area, you got to listen to podcast 208. And then the last podcast, 227, healthyism, healthism, sorry. Okay, I'm going to make this mistake in the rest of the podcast. So excuse me (laughs) right from the beginning. The French in me wants to pronounce healthism as healthyism. Get this out of the way. It's supposed to be healthism. But anyway, podcast 227, with then our third event, we explored the dark side of chasing health and how it can be extremely problematic. And that's how the concept of healthism came in, right? In which this obsession and this, this, this place where we think of our health as our sole responsibility and our moral and our virtue associated with our stat, state of health create actually negative side effect on our health and mainly through the mechanism of stress and restriction, mental health and emotional health issue. So these are the two podcasts I would recommend that you listen first and then come back here 
because this podcast assumes that you know all of this so that we can really talk about how do we then prepare ourselves to commit to our health, uh, which really is self-care without it being actually an endurance to what we're chasing, which is our health. So this anti-diet, going beyond the food approach to health. And that first step is what I opened the podcast with, which is we need to choose love instead of fear. So we need to set our intention with regards to our pursuit of health from a place of love instead of fear. The first thing we need to get out of the way is this desire to lose weight, right? If, if that is your intention in going into the health mastery program that I'm talking about today, you're going to fail. Guaranteed. You're going to come up to the first lesson. And that was one of the first beta group. You come up to the first lesson and they're like, well, Stephanie, you talk about food. It's a diet. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm not talking about food. It's not a diet. I'm teaching you basic nutrition. Like if you were to go to university and learn about nutrition, right? I'm teaching you about protein, fats, and carbs. And like people, I, I didn't frame it properly for them. And then they came up with like, well, it's a diet. No, 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 no. <laughs> right? So you have to go into this from a place of love instead of fear. So if you remove the notion of weight loss as an outcome of health, how can you then engage with nutrition? And that's what intuitive eating teaches us, the last principle of it, which is gentle nutrition. For many of us, we want to engage in gentle nutrition once we work through intuitive eating, but we're like, what are the base principles of nutrition, right? That's what we teach in this program. But all that to say that you have to first engage in your health from a place of love. And it's also where this these four pillar of the going to beyond the food method comes in, right? So our pillar, our value system, if you want, is body wisdom. Your body knows what it needs to do, right? And we need to trust that wisdom. We need to respect that wisdom. And we need to be neutral and detach of the outcome. The truth is you can't bully your body into health in the same way that you can't bully and push your body into a smaller body. The way that your body wisdom created the health that you have currently in your body is as a way of adapting to your environment. Your health status, however you define that, is the outcome of how your body is protecting you, engaging with the current environment that you are in. Mental environment, emotional environment, physical environment, and spiritual environment. So that's the first place. Start from that place of love instead of fear. I can't repeat that enough. The second area or step that you need to take to prepare yourself for engaging with health is realizing that the fact of you being able to focus on your health is a privilege. That the fact that you can even take a course, a program, learn about health is a privilege. That if you were perhaps in a different location of a different race, of a different financial background, you wouldn't have this privilege. This obsession that we're seeing in Western society with health is a really big evidence of our privilege in Western society. You don't have to travel far enough south or east to see that poverty is a huge factor in the ability of people to even think about their health. They're in survival mode all the time that they don't have health care around them to even just do the basic, let alone doing more. So really sit in that notion that it's not a sign of your word. It's a privilege. And often in, in Western society, in diet culture, in what we now know of wellness culture, we tangle the two, right? Our, quote, ability to be healthy is a sign or a definition of our worth. But when we can really sit in our privilege, we can see 
that it's simply a bonus to even be able to just talk about it, let alone commit to action or financial commitment around our health. The third step of the third area is, if you haven't done it yet, untangle your worth as a human being from your health. Becoming healthy, pursuing health is not your life purpose. It is not your job. It is not the reason why you are on this planet here. Weight loss wasn't your job neither. It wasn't your life purpose. Although you thought about that for a very long time, it wasn't, right? If you are at that place where uh, you are um, sharing the same value as me, which is anti-diet, you realize that losing weight wasn't your job. So from that place, you have to understand that chasing health has nothing to do with your worth as a human being. And you have to realize that the new wave of diet culture, this wellness culture that we are all experiencing, unfortunately, over the last five or 10 years, is trying to make us believe that our health status is a sign of our worth, that it is our moral responsibility to do everything that we can to be healthy. And that leads to restriction and spending crazy amount of money on testing and labs and like alternative option and different doctor and detoxes, right? That is not health. That's healthism. And that takes into account only your physical body. And that's the whole centric element of intuitive eating of body neutrality is recognizing that we are more than just our physical body. Not only is our worth not tied to our physical aspect, our weight, our thinness, or our health, right? Our worth is innate within us. It's innate within our spiritual body, mental, emotional, and physical body. So from that place, you have to define your life purpose and the reason why you're here and really detach that from the pursuit of health and obviously the pursuit of weight loss. And I'm really being, I'm putting this out there because that's what I see in my one-on-one client. That's what I see in my student. And that's what I have experienced for myself, and I'm trying to avoid this for you as much as I can by being clear, is that often when we realize that diet don't work, that diet culture is there, we think, well, okay, so I really don't believe in that, but I need to be healthy. So I'm going to put all this mental space and energy on the pursuit of health, and I'm going to take this obsession with weight loss to health. You're really not solving the problem. You're really not moving yourself forward. You're just shifting, right? You still haven't found your innate worth in yourself at the core of yourself. You're still identifying with an external outcome. So if this is you, right, and you're identifying with the status of your health with your work, it's the same path of work as when we have work through body neutrality, or even perhaps for some of you, through body positivity. It's really re-centering ourselves to this place of innate worth in our human being, in ourselves, right? So detaching our word from our health is a necessary step prior to re-engaging into health-promoting behavior. The fourth pillar or steps is to make peace with food and body image because that's the driving factor that will get you to this place of obsession right so you have to detach value around weight and around health with food you have to make peace with food using intuitive eating and then you have to detach your innate worth from that physical weight aspect of your body 
using body positivity or body neutrality. So making peace with food and body image, it's kind of a prerequisite for you to even engage in uh, pursuing health promoting behavior. We have to first deal with that because otherwise it will overshadow anything you are attempting to do in the realm of health. And then that fifth element or that fifth um, area that we need to work on is instead of chasing health, it's about striving for self-care. One of the concepts that's really important for all of us to understand is we never achieve health. If we understand that health is an adaptation mechanism to our environment, we then can understand that our health is a continuum because our health will fluctuate as we adapt to the different stages of life, the different location that we go to, the different people we interact with, right? It's a constant state of adaptation. Our immune system will adapt to the viruses or the bacteria we encounter in new people that we meet, right? Uh, as we get older, our hormonal system will fluctuate to adapt to our age, right? So health is never achieved and done and over with. It's our ability to flow through it. And the way we flow through health is with self-care. Self-care is activities in which we engage deliberately. We choose to engage in those activities in order to take care of our mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical body. And that's the big concept of self-care is it expands out of the regular notion of health, which is attached to the physical body to say, whoa, how do I also take care of my thoughts, my, my mental, emotion, physical, and spiritual? And this is what the program that I've been building for the last two years is really centric around is this holistic nature of the concept of health in human being. Because this is not a common knowledge, because that's not we, what we read mainly on Google or the approach that mainstream medicine takes, it does take you resources that are going to kind of bring awareness around what does a holistic approach to health that is not focused on losing weight or restriction, but instead focus on self-care and love can look like. So that's what the health mastery program is really built around is this holistic anti-diet approach to health. For those who don't know my story, and I just wanted to bring this up, the reason why this is a passion project of mine is because that's what I used to do. Prior to doing my own recovery of diet culture, I was a clinical nutritionist, and that's still my official title. Um, I have a degree in health science, a degree in holistic nutrition, I have training in functional medicine, and I'm rooted in a holistic approach to health. I used to see patients one after the other in a clinic setting, helping them with their health issue. Until I realized that I like everything that I'm getting them to do doesn't work because they're attached to weight loss, right? I was seeing mainly women in my clinic. So I really had to like step back to say, like, before we get to health, we need to deal with the relationship to body and food. So um, this is what this program is built about. So just a little bit on the curriculum so you can really understand. And even if you don't take the program, you can say, okay, so what do I need to focus on or what do I need to look into uh, to educate myself in the context of health from an anti-diet perspective? Number one is, yeah, we need to talk about nutrition, but not with this overshadowing of weight loss, but instead pure nutrition, right? Nourishment, fulfilling the needs of our body. We also need to understand health. How do we assess our day-to-day -day health status? How do we assess our body's capacity 
to adapt to our environment? When is my body giving me sign that perhaps I need to seek higher health or greater help? That I like, this is a sign I need to go see a doctor. I need to go to the hospital. This is okay. I need to do this. Like, how do I assess my health? You are able to do this at the basic level. I'm going to teach you how. Then we need to talk about digestion. What is a properly digesting system? And, and when does it show signs of adaptation? And when is it time for me to take action that I'm out of the norm? And then the next big nugget is sleep, right? Like this is such a basic thing when it comes to health, but that we struggle with. And not only sometimes we do want to sleep more, but we struggle actually sleeping. And we don't understand how to manage that for ourselves. Like, how do I get better sleep? How do I sleep more? And for some of us, it's like, the, first of all, we need to understand why sleep is important, right? And that sleep is a huge self-care action you can take today. And then we need to talk about the, the next lesson we have in the next step is talking about stress, understanding what stress is, what does it do to your body? How does your body adapt to stress? Because it, has, it does a lot of things to, to, uh, to balance your stress in your body. And how do I reduce the load of stress on my body? Another module that we have in this program that all women should be educated upon is hormonal health. And not about fixing our hormones, but first let's start understanding what female hormones are and the flow that we go through as we get older and what is normal of a sign, what is a sign that perhaps something else is going on, just the basic, but we need to understand that. Then we need, the, the, the next component is how the environment. How do we, as human being, engage with our environment, right? Physical environment and product and toxins into our life and this whole notion of detoxification. Oh my God, this is, like, this is where wellness diet gets you, like big time. Like there's this big selling point that we live in this toxic environment and you need to like help your body detox. That is pure BS, okay? Every single minute of every day, your body detoxes. Otherwise, you would be dead by now. So you don't need to do anything special to help your body detox. What you need to do is understand how your environment brings toxins into your life and how you can perhaps reduce the flow of toxin coming into your body. It's not about putting a ton of supplement into your body to help your body detox, but instead, let's reduce the flow of it into our body. Then we need to go into this whole notion of energy in our body and sensitivity to energy. One of the things that I find very common in women that are chronic dieter is this notion of hypersensitivity. Women that are extremely sensitive to energy and other people's energy around them, and they don't know that, and then they then take on this energy and have literally a ton of reaction that it's coming from the energy they're picking up around them. So how do we manage this whole notion of energy in our body? And then the last piece, we do need to talk about physical health right? We need to talk about movement. What do we need to consider when we are perhaps in a bigger body or when we've not been active for a long time when it comes to physical health? What type of movement is appropriate with us? What do we need to also consider to have proper alignment in our body? And yes, in some case, therapeutic nutrition perhaps would be of help to you. Right? Once you've worked through intuitive eating, then what is the context that therapeutic nutrition would help you? And then there's, there's a whole lesson in our program around that. And then we talk about how this health presents itself in society, this whole um, understanding and beliefs around health. So these are the things you need to consider when you're ready to dive back into how do I pursue 
health in the body that I am right now without feeling that I need to lose weight. So as we evolve with this program, the other cool thing that's happening is we are building a series of uh, workshop on specific health topic. So the last two core, those beta core that we did, we already have five bonus specific classes. So um, we have a, a one hour workshop on mastering chronic pain, for an example. We have another one on mastering blood sugar regulation, always without weight loss and without restriction of food. What else comes into play in blood sugar regulation? What else come into play in blood pressure regulation, which is a huge thing for uh, women as we get older? What can we do? If, if it's not about weight loss, what else can we do? That's what we explore. And then we also did one on fatigue chronic fatigue, which seem in my population to be a huge topic as well. So these are, as we build more people going through the program, we do those uh, workshop, and this is part of the bonus you're going to get in joining the Going Beyond the Food Health Mastery program. So um, these are the things you need to think about. So let me recap those five steps for you, those that are taking notes, because I know there's a lot of you who take notes. First place you need to start to adopt an anti-diet approach to health is shifting from fear to love. The second step is realizing that focusing on health is a privilege and not a sign of your worth. Step three is detaching your self-worth from your health status. Four is making peace with food and body image first. And then fifth is striving for self-care instead of health. So these are the five steps. The Health Mastery Program has some great resources for you. I want this to be a place of resource, and we're going to keep building resources. So as you um, graduate from intuitive eating and body image, you can then head towards this Health Mastery Program and get the information that will not trigger you back into diet culture and or wellness culture as well. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And if you did, please leave us a review. As I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, it's a huge help to rank the podcast. And we have another great show coming up for you the next week on the next episode, however you watch, listening to that. Uh, we have a guest that's coming back for the second time on the podcast, and that's Rebecca Schrenfields from Body Kindness. And she's going to come and do a full hour on diabetes and intuitive eating, because that's a huge topic specifically around the trend we're seeing right now with low carb and keto and how do we engage with carbohydrate and intuitive eating and diabetes. So um, it's going to be a full hour podcast because it was um, loaded with education and knowledge for you. So I look forward to uh, sharing this interview with you. I love you, sister, and I look forward to hang out with you again on the next episode.